Hey, how you doing? I'm Daryl O'Donnell talking a little bit about blockchain identity and I just put up a web post last week about the Hitchhiker's Guide to Blockchain Identity. Um, the reason behind that was it was kind of funny. I was talking to a buddy of mine and, and we're talking about why identity is so hard. Why is digital identity so expensive? Why does it seem like nowadays it really it is only an expense and a liability um, unless you're like Google or Facebook, in which case you're making money on my digital identity. But why are companies spending so much? Why are organizations, not for profits, spending so much on identity? We realize that it's really because it's not their problem to solve at large, but they have to have a digital identity in order to work with you. That introduces so many different things. And it reminded me of um, the part in uh, it, it's in, in So Long and Thanks for the Thanks for All the Fish. There's a scene in which uh, Ford Prefect, they're, they're walking around a cricket field, Lord's, Lord's Cricket Ground. And they suddenly see, out of the corner of their eye, an SEP field is what Ford's talking about. An SEP field is a somebody else's problem, which is Douglas Adams' way of creating an invisibility field. It is his way of saying, you know, this is really a somebody else's problem in human nature, uh, you know, as we just gloss over. We just look past it. And I realized that blockchain and identity are starting to break down this somebody else's problem field that's there, this invisibility field around digital identity that's causing nothing, nothing but problems. Now that we don't have to worry about the anchoring, now that the blockchain identity solution, specifically Sovereign, and one that was one I'm working with, um, but other ones are out there, Uport, and uh, you, perhaps you could call Civic um, big enough for that, but the whole idea that the blockchain identity solutions are out there, so that there are some ways to anchor small amounts of information so you know who you're dealing with. Usually that's kept off chain, but that anchoring point makes it possible now for me to trust that you are who you say you are, that your organization is the proper organization for me to be working with, that we can trust each other and establish that in a very decentralized manner. And it kind of breaks down this whole invisibility field. It's kind of a, an interesting way to look at things. If you look at actually where blockchain is also just taking off outside of the identity space, the solutions that really resonate well with blockchain are sitting there in areas where there's really nobody truly in charge. And digital identity, arguably, there's nobody truly in charge. There are players, many different players, companies, governments, individuals, go way beyond that. But their job is not to own the whole problem. Where somebody owns the whole problem, there's really no need for a blockchain. All it is is a slow database. It's a crappy slow database. But where there is truly no central point of control, and there shouldn't be a central point of control, we end up with this situation where blockchain is, is ideal. Additionally, there are inefficiencies due to the solutions that are out there. For example, in the federated identity realm, it is highly expensive. It's extremely expensive, highly inefficient, and even the biggest of the big only make so many federation connections to their key partners, and then they stop because it's just not worth the extra cost. Whereas when we do blockchain on the uh, blockchain identity, when we decentralize it, we all get the same benefits of 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 trusting the information and being able to establish trust. The information itself doesn't isn't quote trusted, but you can be, be trust it by going through just a few procedures with verifiable claims and anchoring things on the ledger. So it kind of breaks down this 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 problem where all of these different types of players are dancing around. Um, supply chains are another example of where we have so many different players. Uh, a good example is, uh, you know, a mango farmer shipping a product all the way that ends up on your plate that you bought through Walmart. And how many different layers? And each of them are totally different. You got farmers. You have, uh, you know, wholesale uh, buyers of of produce. You have shippers. You have logistics hubs. You got the major corporations like Walmart involved. At every step of the way, something can happen. And uh, that's a great example where blockchain applies. The same thing as identity is just literally everywhere. It's nobody's problem to solve, which means it's got that sort of somebody else's problem feeling. And that's why I look at this as, uh, yeah, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Blockchain Identity. Have an awesome one.